to uh, go back to this and on this. Oh, not that. Oop. Uh, on this. There we go. This one uh, was the um, let's do Friday the thirteenth, and you only had to do um, the. You only had to do the, um, heck you darn, it's Monday, can you tell? Let's try it one more time, there we go. Um, you only had to do section three and four. The beginning part's probably a good um, view, but it was necessary. So you were supposed to start on slide 12. And um, there was a little reading to do. Um, I could tell some of you were, uh, probably rushing to do this. Um, it says, uh, the question here is, what waves of electromagnetic spectrum can be emitted by nuclear radiation? And uh, some people were putting things down like alpha particles and beta particles, and um, those are particles, and positrons and neutrons and all sorts of stuff. And um, those are particles, those are matter. They have mass, they have volume, they're you know, super tiny. Um, and so they're not waves. Waves are electromagnetic spectrum. We're going to go into that hot and heavy in the next uh, week and a half before um, final and stuff because it was so critical to figuring out uh, the structure of the atom. So uh, waves of energy are on the electromagnetic spectrum, and that covers everything from radio waves to gamma rays. In the middle of that is visible light. Okay, everything that your eyeballs can detect, but there's other stuff, other size waves and um, x-rays and gamma rays. They're now saying they're pretty much overlapping, but we still have that distinction between them. X-rays are a little bit longer wavelength, still super high frequency, still very high energy, still very damaging to living tissue, and then gamma rays are the worst. Um, so it was asking about waves. <laughs> um, and a lot of people miss that. A lot of you uh, watch this terrible story. We're going to talk a little bit more about it um, tomorrow. I uh, I uh, got the book, <laughs> and I'm about halfway through it. It's uh, just super tragic, anyhow. But the fight that these women put up and ultimately got us the Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA which protects people in the workplace now because they were treated so badly. So um, anyway, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Uh, this one, there was a video and it's asking you about um, uh, wavelength and frequency. That's all it wanted to know. So again, longer wavelengths, shorter wavelengths. If you have shorter wavelengths, you have a higher frequency as it says right here. So the wavelengths get shorter, the frequency increases, that means there's more waves per second going by, and that also has to do with more energy, okay? High energy electromagnetic radiation causes damage to living tissue. End of story. Um, <laughs> this one, um, I think all of you watched the video, but I think a lot of you missed um, reading the little uh, blurb. It was a pretty long article, but the first paragraph or two gave you the information you needed. Um, Quite a few people put down that the British spy agency that Letvienko worked for was the Kremlin. Um, for those of you that don't know, the Kremlin is a structure in Russia. It's a building. Um, it's their country seat, like Washington, D.C. kind of thing, like the White House. Um, so. Yeah, that was kind of humorous. British spy agency, also some of you put down the Federal Spy Bureau or something like that, which is what the KGB um, was later called, is now called. Um, this British spy agency is M16. Whoops. So anyway, um, and then, yeah, everybody got that they put it in ST. Horrible death. Uh, if you look up his story, um, it's pretty, really sad. It took a long time for him to die. Very painful slow death. Thank you those of you that did the exit ticket. It was fun reading them. Um, so I would like feedback at some point. You can just type it in the chat. 
Um, I uh, may have made a comment to you, but when I type on this, it looks like I'm just editing the slide, and I don't know if you know if I'm that I've made any comments. So um, yeah, maybe I should make myself a student account and see. But let me know if you uh, saw my comments. Um, three types of radioactivity. Everybody got that. Alpha particles, beta particles, gamma rays. Okay, and then. Um, these are just explainers that gave you all the answers on these three slides um, to sort uh, these things. So um, highest energy wave, that would be gamma, stopped by aluminum foil, that's beta. Yes, alpha particles could be as well, but it's mentioned for the beta, traveling slow with alpha particles stopped by wood, beta particles pass through your body, gamma rays. Um, low mass is the beta particle, that's a Electrons mass, alpha particles are the heavy ones. Gamma rays aren't mass, don't have mass, they're not matter. And so there was no mass for them. Uh, I'm trying to know what else did people, uh, most of you did uh, fine on these. Uh, loses energy quickly as big, heavy alpha particles typically aren't a problem unless they get into your body. So if you ingest them, or ingest radioactive substances that emit alpha particles, like the radium girls did, or um, emit beta, they're damaging. And so these two are considered ionizing, they knock electrons off of the atoms, which means then the atoms can't bond. Um, alpha particles are big, heavy, clunky things, but they do the most damage if they're inside. Your skin and clothes will protect you, but uh, if they're inside, they will and cause a lot of damage. And uh, some of you asked some really great questions uh, about an electromagnetic spectrum, and um, uh, we will get to that. Somebody else asked about why does lead uh, block, and it has to do with the fact that the lead atom, uh, the nucleus is so big and there's so many electrons, it deflects um, the ionizing radiation. Um, yeah, there are a lot of good uh, questions there. Is there anything I can answer for you right now? Oh my goodness, all these notifications go away. <laughs> all right, well, if there aren't any questions, then what I'm gonna do is um, go through um, this presentation. And again, take your own notes. I'm not gonna collect them, you take your own notes. Um, uh, we left off talking about nuclear reactors and how they function. Um, the problem is um, once uh, the fuel is used for a few years, um, it doesn't fission as much because some of it's converted into different isotopes um, from nuclear decay and it becomes inefficient for making um, electricity and it doesn't, uh, uh, does the rest of them don't fission enough, fast enough to make electricity. So. Um, a lot of very radioactive material is still left over um, in those fuel rods. And the spent fuel rods um, are a major source of nuclear pollution. Um, they're not the biggest source. That has to do with the military weapons program, but they are still a big source of nuclear pollution. And um, their volume is small relative to the massive amounts of nuclear waste generated by medical procedures, um, but they're very high level, very dangerous nuclear waste as opposed to the stuff in medicine, which usually has a very short half-life. This stuff has really long half-lives, millions of years, thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, and so it's, it's a mess for a long time. Okay, and um, those fission products that come out are also radioactive. So even though the fuel might have decayed, its daughter product, the daughter radioisotope is also radioactive almost all the time. So um, that's a problem. And this is a map, um, this is the most recent map I looked again uh, this year. This is uh, from 2002. Um, it shows 131 sites in, thir in 30, nine states that have nuclear uh, reactors, whether they're for research or for power. Um, most of the commercial reactors 
um, all of the commercial reactors are storing their uh, waste products on site. Um, we have the Rancho Seco reactor, which is up by Sacramento, and it has quite a bit of nuclear waste still at it, but nowhere to go except leave it there. Um, there was one up in Northern California. Um, there's the San Onofre plant. All of those have been closed. The Diablo plant, which I'll talk about a little later right here by San Luis Obispo, is going to be um, decommissioned. Uh, 19, uh, 19, 20, 24, and 25. Um, <clears throat> oops, there we go. <laughs> um, there are a lot of research reactors, so Stanford and Berkeley, Lawrence Livermore, the National Laboratory. Um, there's UCLA, there's uh, others in all over the state, but they are very small reactors. They're not big producers, but they still have nuclear waste on site. So what do we do with that? Um, the only thing that they can do right now, um, the picture is in your book. I don't have it right here. I guess I have my slides out of order. Um, they put them into swimming pools, okay, and um, at the nuclear reactor sites. They also have um, tried uh, to do something called geologic disposition, which is a fancy way for stuffing it under the ground somewhere. Um, <clears throat> this particular uh, waste site, here was a pilot plant in New Mexico. Um, it's in a, a block of salt kind of stuff. That's one of the ways that um, they think will protect people. Um, of course, salt makes uh, is very corrosive to metals. So I don't know how that works real well. Um, this pilot plant in New Mexico uh, was started, I think, in 1999, or maybe that's when they first started putting stuff in there. In 2014, they had an explosion, and a couple dozen workers got exposed to aerosolized radium, uh, polonium, and um, yeah, so this is a pilot plant. This is a first trial, and they've already had problems with it. Another issue with storing things at a in New Mexico, or as we'll see in a minute in Nevada, is um, people don't want this next to them, right? So it's out in the middle of nowhere. Um, some people live there. A lot of Indian reservations, Native American uh, populations are out in these uh, not nice areas. Um, this is a term that was coined years ago, not in my backyard. Nobody wants a nuclear waste storage site next to their house, understandably. I think most of us would agree that probably isn't a good idea. Um, Yucca Mountain in Nevada, uh, about 80 miles northeast of Las Vegas, um, was a federal site that uh, got started, uh, again, probably in the 80s. They started talking about it, and then it got started being built in uh, uh, the early 90s or late 80s. Um, it is a huge undertaking. These are train tracks going into this um, facility to store nuclear waste underground. The problem is, again, um, maybe not so much NIMBY, but transporting the materials to Nevada. So they have to leave California. They have to leave Washington State. They have to leave Missouri, wherever, and travel across the country to get to this one facility. Um, and a little blurb, we'll watch a little news clip we'll watch later, there's a senator, state senator uh, from Nevada saying, we don't want this in our state, um, which is kind of interesting. All right, so again, where do they store the fuel rods on site? They store them in uh, water baths and swimming pools. Um, there's two benefits to that, of course. Um, this blue glow is real. They do glow, um, just like the radium girls did. Um, that glow is from um, electrons absorbing energy from decay and then falling back down to give off visible light. It's crazy. So this stuff is in a water bath um, to do two things, keep it from overheating, and also the water provides um, some shielding as well. The nuclear power industry, uh, you know, got started after World War II. Um, they started building reactors like crazy. Uh, whoops, heck, in the um, 
60s and 70s. And they were supposed to make lots and lots of energy. Um, they haven't made as much energy as um, they said they would. Um, it's, you know, nothing's 100%, of course. Um, we still have a fairly consistent number of reactors. And again, in the United States, our reactors are getting really, really old. And um, <clears throat> they have to be repaired. <laughs> um, this is from, I think, 2017, the cost uh, for energy in North America. Um, $45 per megawatt hour uh, was the price for, um, for wind power, 50 bucks for solar, 60 for natural gas, $102 per megawatt hour for coal, $148 per megawatt hour for nuclear power. Super costly, okay? This is a very expensive technology and that's not even factoring in <laughs> dealing with the waste, okay? That's building the structures, running the plants, getting more fuel, mining the fuel, processing fuel, et cetera. Uh, this is a more recent one. Uh, this was uh, at the end of last year, uh, the most recent. Solar is actually cheaper than wind at this time. Massive drop in cost per uh, megawatt hour. Um, but nuclear has only gotten more expensive. Okay? So um, the question in my mind is like, well, what's the point? If it's that expensive and that dangerous, why, sh why would we use it? Fit, uh, I'll put this in the daily feed if you want to watch it because there's still a lot of people that are big proponents of nuclear power plants. Um, you probably can figure out I'm not. <laughs> so what happened, um, there's been uh, lots of nuclear weapons right, built um, during World War II. That's how we ended World War II. Um, the, uh, uh, one, one place that they built uh, weapons was outside of the Denver area, Rocky Flats. And um, unbeknownst to the people in Denver, um, there were fires there and radiation uh, emissions there that probably, um, probably affected a lot of people. 1957, there was a big fire. In 1969, there was another fire. This is the one from the 57 fire of um, these areas. Um, and if you're interested, you can look into that. Um, this is for, uh, old pictures from 1960. Um, Washington uh, State has the Hanford Nuclear Power Site. This is where um, the first uh, bombs uh, were actually made. And it's on the Columbia River. Of course, they need a big cooling source. Um, I'm sure this area doesn't look like that anymore, but it's now one of our um, super fun sites. It's super high radioactive waste here and tons of it, just amazing quantities of it. And the casks that they put the stuff in, um, just last year they were talking about how they were leaking and they didn't know what they were gonna do with them. All right, so nuclear disasters, there's uh, just like we have a scale, a number scale for earthquakes, we have that for disasters. One is like, you know, something weird happened, no big deal. Seven is a major incident. Um, Three Mile Island uh, was considered a level five. There was, uh, this is near, uh, in, in Pennsylvania, again, they're on a river. Um, one of the power plants, uh, some of the pipes of the radioactive uh, fluid um, actually leaked. Um, this is very old style of gas masks and ventilators. We don't have those anymore, but this is from 1979, in March of 1979. Uh, I tried to access this, but I can't seem to make a Sacramento Bee um, account. At any rate, um, after the um, uh, Three Mile Island became uh, you know, national news, um, people, uh, activists in the Sacramento area jumped the fence at Rancho Seco and protested. And then eventually we got um, the power plant to be shut down. People voted to shut down the power plant. SMUD, the Sacramento Municipal Utilities District, um, is the owner of it. And this gentleman will talk to you about it a little bit. No longer pay for Best Buy. Capital One shopping can save you money. It's a browser extension. Tons of nuclear waste sitting outside Sacramento, maybe on the 
room after three decades of sitting in storage. A deal in Congress today would allow local nuclear sites to send their waste to temporary facilities. Here tonight, CBS 13's Drew Balea spoke to the former manager of the Rancho Seco nuclear facility and joins us live in Sacramento with more on this. Drew? Good evening, guys. SMUD owns and operates that Rancho Seco facility, and a House bill would allow that, uh, that waste to be transported out of state. But some environmentalists that I spoke to today who actually helped close that facility say they want the waste to stay put, at least for now. On the outskirts of Sacramento, beneath the Rancho Seco nuclear power plant towers, sit 22 canisters, each the size of a truck, filled with radioactive waste. At the end of the day, we do need a long-term facility. Jim Shetler worked as an assistant manager of the plant during its operation in the 1970s and facilitated its closure in 1989. It was this fence that protesters jumped over in the 1970s to show their opposition to nuclear power. Then, a decade later, it was smug customers who voted to shut down Rancho Seco. The closure of Rancho Seco was the right decision, but it was a very difficult time to live through. The waste has been sitting idle for 30 years. Securing it costs SMUD customers about $5 million a year. But today, a breakthrough. Elected leaders in Washington passing a bill that allows nuclear site waste to be transported to temporary storage facilities in states like New Mexico and Texas. We would um, be able to repurpose that site and save the customers money. The political move is a concern for environmentalists. I oppose moving it from the site where it was generated. Dan Hirsch is a UC professor and activist. He says it wouldn't be ethical to burden other communities with the dangerous material. We need a permanent, um, well thought out uh, repository. He's also concerned about moving the waste multiple times. There's always the risk of an accident or a terrorist attack during transport. But experts say the radioactive waste filled canisters can withstand an accident and that the wait is over. It's time to act. At some point, someday, we have to do it. Yeah. Um, anyway, I want to share that with you. So that's right close to us. And um, it may be moved someday. So you may hear about that in the future. Let's get to the biggies. Uh, Chernobyl was uh, a terrible disaster. So in April, 1986, um, a nuclear power plant in, outside of Kiev, north of Kiev, um, blew up. Um, they were running a test um, to check the operating system, and much like the Radium Girls, they were sure that super safe, super safe, super safe. Um, they um, had valves tied off with ropes that they couldn't access. Um, they weren't supposed to pull out all the control rods, and they did. They did all sorts of s terribly silly, stupid human errors that caused it to um, overheat so quickly it blew up. And so that's a chunk of the graphite um, that was inside of it. Tons, literally tons of uh, nuclear material got blasted into the atmosphere. Um, so here's the crater left after um, they've taken some stuff away. These are other um, other uh, structures. They didn't have a good containment dome. There's all sorts of things wrong with the design of this, but it was a terrible disaster. Um, hundreds and hundreds of people were enlisted to go running in. They tried with uh, robots, but there was so much uh, radiation that it fried all the circuitry on the robots. They couldn't um, fly over with helicopters because it messed up the electrical systems. And helicopters, they were trying to dump water on it to cool it off and put it out. And it was it's just uh, tragic. And um, they didn't tell anybody for days. It was actually um, scientists uh, in Switzerland, I think, or Norway, that detected an increase in radiation and they got scared because they thought it was their nuclear power plant giving it off. It turns out it just blew over uh, Europe and um, it was bad. Um, this area, uh, here's where the power plant is. These are all dead trees. The, the trees close to it were just blown flat and then they scraped them all off and dug them up and buried them. Um, these trees all died because of the high uh, radiation. 
Um, this gentleman was a little bit of a nutter, but he went around co collecting, um, you know, the claim by the industry is that there were no birth defects, there was no problem, da 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 um, And he, this was a Ukrainian uh, doctor, he was collecting specimens um, and collecting them and cataloging them. And then, um, yeah, I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> Um, these are, this is a horrible picture, I'm sorry, these are children, children are the most susceptible to radiation damage, they didn't give the kids um, iodine, one of the things that happens is radioactive iodine is one of the byproducts and it concentrates in your thyroid, um, hydrocephaly, elephantitis, all sorts of horrible things these children suffered, um, many of them uh, you know, lost their hair, had to have their thyroids removed, this is a child getting uh, injection and in, or blood drawn from a stent. Um, it's super sad. Um, the claim that you know only uh, 35 people I think died because of it is absurd. They were the immediate uh, people, the people working in the plant, but lots of people suffered afterwards. In Europe for years, decades, there were um, groups that would take uh, children from this area on holiday, get them away from the area for uh, four to six weeks, um, bring them to to places that weren't as radioactive. Um, the problem now is they quickly made what was called a sarcophagus. They quickly made a structure to surround uh, what was left of the core, what was still inside that's super radioactive. Um, but they made it so fast. I mean, if they ever work with concrete, you know that you have to kind of pay attention to temperature and water content and all that. Um, the structure is decaying, and so um, it's become an international quest to build a proper covering that'll last 100 years, and then somebody else is going to have to figure it out. So they actually built it. There's a video I'm not going to play for you right now, but um, of how they built this structure it was a French company. Um, these are uh, it's a movable structure, so it would slide over the top of the um, the original um, reactor. Uh, Fukushima is the most recent disaster. This is in Japan. Of course, ironically, Japan's super dependent on nuclear power for their electricity. Um, they have no natural resources. They don't have gas. They don't have oil. So they build nuclear power plants, which is just hard to imagine after uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but they did. And of course, they're on rivers and the coastline. Um, the Fukushima plant had um, four reactors. Um, everything was going well. They have a, a big tsunami wall. Um, they had plants. They had backup generators to keep it cool, all this good stuff. They, it's a smart reactor except when you have a 9.0 earthquake and a tsunami. And in March 2011, there was a huge wall of water that just washed over. This is like a mile or two inland up here where the water just rushed in, killing hundreds of thousands of people, destroying um, that whole portion of the island, moving boats on top of buildings. It was just crazy, awful horrible tsunami and um, pouring over their seawalls that they had in place and pretty quickly um, they noticed there was a problem at the nuclear power plant and the problem was the generators were in a basement so they make a 30 foot high tsunami wall and you have a 40 foot tsunami the water gets over, it gets in, it gets down in the basement. The generators don't work, they can't cool the reactors, and um, eight days later, uh, one of the reactors uh, blew, and um, the core was exposed. Um, again, a big problem, lots of contamination. It actually wafted across the Pacific to California, it took a few days to get here, but um, yeah, it was crazy. So. Here's the before, nice and neat as a pin, all clean and tidy, looks super safe, and all this stuff's just wiped off the face of the earth. Um, again, children 
are the most concerned. It's just so ironic. This guy's all bundled up uh, in nuclear gear, and these people don't even have masks on. This baby doesn't have anything covering his nose and mouth. Again, breathing alpha particles is bad for you. Um, it's just really, really sad. Um, our nuclear power plants, again, um, the Diablo uh, nuclear power plant are there's two reactors. One will close the end of 24 and the other one uh, mid-25. Um, <clears throat> San Onofre down in San Diego has already closed and again Diablo will close uh, soon, relatively soon. All right, um, questions? Oops, vectors, reviews, where are you guys? There you are. Questions from anybody? All right, um, I believe you should have gotten the exit ticket. Right, a question that you think would be a good question, multiple choice question, based on today's notes. And if there aren't any other questions, I will let you go 